If you are walking down the right path and you are willing to keep walking with it, you will eventually get progress one day. Just pursue some path, however crooked or narrow, in which you can walk with reverence and confidence. Hey friends, this is Ria Khilmani from Biotechnica. Today, I have come up with most 10 important things that you should keep in your mind while you are preparing for Unit 5, that is Developmental Biology under CSIR Net Life Sciences syllabus. So before proceeding with this video, I just wanted to request all of my friends to stay tuned and connected till the last part of it so that whosoever is in dilemma to how to execute this study plan for unit 5 should get a better and proper strategic plan and also be benefited at the last so with no more delay let's proceed with this video so the very first question that it comes is what is this unit 5 about so this unit is all about developmental biology it is a process by which the animals and plants develop and grow. What all things are included in this unit? It includes the biology of reproduction, regeneration, organogenesis, morphogenesis, and also the growth and differentiation of the adult stem cells in an adult organism. So it is seen that most of the questions are asked every year from this unit. So it is regarded as one of the most important unit under CSIR Net Life Sciences syllabus. So you should not skip this unit. So yes, so now let us see what is the syllabus for this unit. So this syllabus is directly being copied from the CSIR website. So if you see, there are five subparts that are there in this syllabus. So the first subpart over here is basic concepts of development. For this, you need to study about the basic terminologies that are there for development, like potency, commitment, specification, induction, what is determination, what are different types of cell fits, all these things you should know for the basic concepts. The second portion that deals with gametogenesis, fertilization, as well as early development. Here, you need to study about what is fertilization and how an embryo is developed inside the mother's body. The third part over here is morphogenesis and gametogenesis in animals. Here, we study about some model organisms like C. elegans, what is Drosophila. We also learn about tetrapod limb development and along with it, we also focus on chick development part. There are other topics also like sex determination, so it is to be focused here only. The fourth topic is morphogenesis and organogenesis in plants. So here we learn about the model organism that is Arabidopsis, that is a plant model organism. Here we also learn about the phyllotaxis. And the last subpart that we have here is program cell that, that is PCD and also aging and senescence. So this is the syllabus for the unit number five that is developmental biology. So these are the list of reference work that you can refer to it for your preparation for this unit. So the most accepted and revised book for this unit is Developmental Biology 12th edition by Scott F. Gilbert. So if you want to learn the principles of development, you can also go for Lewis Wolpert. There is an Essential Developmental Biology by Zonathan M. W. Slack. Also, if you go more into the insights of human embryology, you can go for Larson's too. So now let us more come into the insights of a study plan that is need that you need to have for this unit. So the very first important thing over here is you should always know about the developmental biology's marks distribution and its weightage in the last five years. So I've tried to put all the marks distribution in the last five years. So if you are knowing about the marks distribution and weightage for the unit you are executing to, it will lessen your assignment and workload by up to 50 percent. So uh, in June 2021, the recent exam that we had, it was conducted in first and second shift. There were two shifts. So in first shift, it was asked for 30 marks, whereas in second shift, it was asked for 24 marks. In June 2020 attempt, also we had two shifts, that is first and second. In both the shift, it was for 28 marks. You can see the equal marks di distribution for the two shifts. In 2019 exam, that is June and December attempt we had. Again, for June and December, it was asked for 24 marks. Whereas in June 2018 exam, it was asked for 30 marks. Whereas it was asked for 28 marks in December 2018 exam. In 2017 exam, June attempt, it was asked for 30 marks. 
and in December attempt is what it was asked for 38 marks. So after all seeing uh, seeing all these marks distribution, we have just come into the approximation like 25 to 35 marks question are asked every year from this unit. So you should be thorough with all the concepts and details of unit five that is developmental biology. So yes. So the next most important thing is you need to have a proper and strategic schedule plan. So if you are preparing this schedule plan, it will help you to best utilize your study hours. Also, it will help you to cover your topics in a short duration of time. So you need to prepare a study plan in advance and you should proceed slowly with that. So what is the study plan that you need to have for this unit that is developmental biology. So if you're preparing for CSIR net life sciences exam. So you need to have a minimal time period of six months. So in six months, you will cover the whole life sciences syllabus. So six months in six months, you are having 180 days. That is six into 30. What is it? It is 180 days. So if you see the CSI life sciences syllabus, there are total 13 units. And if you take general aptitude into account, it will be regarded as 14th module. And after covering all your syllabus, you will go for revision as well as previous year questions practice. So again, that will take taken into account as a single module. So if you combine all these 13 units along with general aptitude as well as revision and PYQ section, you will have total 15 modules in CSIR unit syllabus. Although there are 13 modules, but if you combine general aptitude as well as revision along with PYQs, there are total 15 modules. So again, if you divide this 180 by 15, you will get 12 days approx. That means, what does it mean? You need to prepare single unit for 12 days. Again, there are some units in CSI and at life sciences syllabus like 12 unit that is applied biology. That is every year it is asked along with unit th 13 that is methods in biology. Again, unit four that is cell communication and cell signaling. It is asked always along with unit two. And for unit nine, that is diversity of life forms that you don't need to prepare, just you need to prepare a PYQs for it. So if you shift this 12 days, you can get 25 to 30 days for developmental biology. Why I'm saying this, you can shift this 12 to 25, 12 days to 25 to 30 days because there are many units which are prepared along with some other unit. So you can dedicate your more hours for study for this unit because it is regarded as one of the most important unit under the CSIR net life sciences syllabus. So the third topic over here is segregate and accelerate. So what do you mean by segregate here? Segregate means to divide something into smaller fragments. So what you need to divide here? You need to divide the large syllabus into hard and easy modules and then accelerate. That means after this you need to prepare for this syllabus. You just need to break this last syllabus into manageable chunks that you can manage and you can easily grasp all of the important topics. So I have tried arranging all this last syllabus into hard and easy modules for you candidates. You, you can just refer to this, what are the easy topics and hard topics that are asked in exams. So under hard topics, uh, you will get C. elegance developmental biology all developmental pathways you will get under hard topics. So under hard topic, you will get C. elegans, Drosophila developmental biology, it is C. urgent developmental biology, frog developmental biology, tetrapod limb development, chick development, human fertilization, as well as plant fertilization and phallotaxy in Arabidopsis. Whereas under easy topics, you have basic terminologies like stem cell you need to cover, what is the potency, what are two different type of specification, what are the paracrine factors, like there are many paracrine factors which are needed for the cell signaling and development. So you need to know about that also. What are the ABC model? What are the genes involved in ABC model? What is eye lens induction? What are the conditions that are arising if we have a defect in the eye lens induction process? What is gametogenesis? Here you need to focus on what is oogenesis and what is spermatogenesis. So these two pathways generally comes under gametogenesis part versus what is sex determination? What are the 
different factors that determines the female body what are the different patterns factors and patterns that determine the male body so you should know all these things what are teratogen what if these teratogen get mutation under embryo embryogenesis yeah embryonic development and also you need to know about the dictyostelium discoidium what are the three phases in dictyostelium what are the cmp levels in these three levels like aggregation what are the cmp levels for that what is pcd aging and senescence so this syllabus is been divided into hard and easy modules so you can refer to this slide and plan your study accordingly so the first topic over here is like if you have if you are knowing about the marks distribution and if you are uh, preparing uh, for the best study schedule for this unit now it's a time to have uh, best study resources for unit number five because without best study material is like a bird without wings so for this you need to have a standard book that i already mentioned in the earlier slide okay you have four standard book for this you can refer that to and it is very important to read a research article you should always develop a habit of reading this research or review articles because after reading this review articles you are getting a detailed view and uh, experimental concept of a subject or a topic uh, so if you don't want to study this standard book or if it is very hectic for some students so if you want some prepared now so you can get a biotechnica complete modules that are there for every units and for this unit too this will serve as a csir trustable uh, preparation resources where you can get uh, online videos, lectures and classes for a topic or for, for any subject related. What is the point number five here? So while you are preparing for this unit five, that is developmental biology, you need to focus on a statement-based study. So what is this statement-based study? Because sometimes CSIR asks about the conceptual and experimental-based questions, that is research-oriented questions on some important topics like, what are the topics that are there? It is paracrine factors like what all paracrine factors are there what paracrine factors like when they come into fun function what are their modification needed beforehand what are morphogen like what is the features of morphogen properties they act in a concentration dependent manner like these simple statement they focus on what is the c elegance developmental biology and cleavage what are the how is the cleavage determine like how is the axis and polarity dorsal ventral and anterior posterior axis is determined in the body of c elegans what is eye lens induction and what is the new relation process that helps in the development of brain after eye induction what is drosophila development what are different genes that are responsible for the development of drosophila like what is the dorsal ventral axis polarity development what is anterior posterior polarity axis development so all things you should need to know in aspect of statement based study like you should all also know about the different types of genes that are involved in the uh, formation of drosophila body like if it is gap ju gap genes payroll genes maternal genes homeotic selector genes sometimes they will ask the um, information related to homeotic selector genes like ultra bithorax antinapedia like this all information you should know about the drosophila development also what is frog development what is spemens organization what is um, organizer what is new coop center all these things you should know for frog development you should also focus for fertilization in plants and animals and in animals you need to focus for sex determination because sometimes statement based questions are asked from this topic too sea urchins development as well as tetrapod and chick development so if you see uh, pyq's last previous year questions you will find there is a transplant transplantation study that is asked for frog development along with tetrapod and chick development and sea urchins so they ask like say, like if some tissue is there so what will happen if we transplant this tissue in the body of a frog or tetrapod in case of tetrapod or sea urchins so like this they ask for yeah, they focus on transplantation studies too. So, uh, like uh, I have explained, like what all things you need to focus on these topics. So, in these topics, you need to frog, sea urchins, and tetrapod. You need to focus for transplantation studies. 
Now the topic number six over here is practice diagrams and flowchart. So apart from practicing for statement based question, you should always practice for flowchart and diagrams because some topics are there that are asked in the form of schematic diagrams. So what all topics are asked in the form of schematic diagrams? It is trophoblast, ICM, disease and fate. Like in blastula stage, we have blastocyst. Now what all things blastocyst contains? It contains, contains trophoblast. It it also contains ICM. What else it contains? It contains blastocyst cavity. All right. So, what is the genes? What are the fate that are causing these cells to become trophoblast in future? Causing these cells to become ICM in future? That is what called trophoblast ICM signaling. That is only taking place with the help of genes that are there in the blastocyst, yeah, blastula stage, or nearby surrounding. So, what is the disease and fate? Also, you should know about the C. elegans apoptotic pattern. What is CED4? What is CED9? So sometimes on the basis of diagrams or on the basis of inhibition mechanism, they ask about the C. elegans apoptotic pathways. Also, you should know about the plant development. Like what all genes are important for plant development? What all genes are important for root development as well as shoot meristem development? So you should need to know about all these topics under plant development. What is vernalization? What are the genes that are responsible for causing the vegetative uh, meristem transformation into floral meristem? So all things in vernalization. How disease formation is taking place? What all things are uh, inhibited during the formation of disease formation? What is gemelin? All these things comes under disease formation. Also, you should focus for the diagram of tetrapod limb development. How this tetrapod and how these limbs are formed, like hind limbs, what are the factors that are upregulated during hind limbs and fore limbs ka formation? Is it TBX5 for hind limb or fore limb? you should know all these small small factors what is the fate map of an organism during clavish like here you have to remember the organs that we have like these are from from which kind of germ layer? Is it mesoderm, ectoderm, or endoderm? All these fate of germ layer you should know. Also, you need to do a TNET based study for Arabidopsis. This is a plant model. So you should study for an ABC model development. Here you need to focus for three classes of gene. What are these classes? Class A, class B, and class C. What will happen if these classes of gene are mutated? So you should also learn about the mutation classes for these all these three classes of genes. So point number seven here is I wanted to give you salient feature tips for unit five. Now what are the feature tips for unit five? So the first thing you should always focus on the ligands of signaling pathway. So for example, if you have a hedgehog signaling, so what is the ligand for this? The hedgehog itself is a ligand for patch receptor. Like in case of WNT, WNT itself is a ligand for prisal receptor. So like this, you should always learn a specific ligand receptor complexes. Also, you should make a comparative chart to know what are the types of stem cell. So we do have five types of stem cell like this. We have totipotent, we have pluripotent, we have multipotent, we have unipotent. All these stem cells, you should also know the examples related related with it. What are the types of specification? Like we have two kinds of specification, conditional and autonomous. What are the factors that are making it conditionally specified? What are the factors that are responsible for the cell to be autonomously specified? So it is cytoplasmic determinant. So for this, you can just prepare a comparison table and learn these concepts. What are the gene names that are involved in ABC model? What are the fate of germ layer? What are the different organs that are formed with the help of actoderm, mesoderm, as well as endoderm? What are the types of X and cleavage pattern? Here you need to focus on what is holoblastic cleavage, what is meroblastic cleavage, what is discoidal, what is an example of rotational cleavage, what is the type of cleavage and egg that is found in case of humans, and found in case of C. elegans, as well as birds. You should also do a study on the basis of mesh of the following type. Like what are the genes that are involved in Drosophila, whether it is maternal gene, gap genes. Sometimes they just give you a fourth name of the genes and you need to 
pair with the types of gene it is like if it is maternal gene gap genes pair rule genes like this you should always study the mutation cases for these genes like if what will happen if this mute maternal genes will be inhibited yeah if it is mutated what are the gastrulation movement what is the morphogenesis definition like here you need to focus about the morphogenesis definitions that is what is ingression what is invagination what is delamination so here you also need to focus for the examples of all these movement that is coming under gastrulation part the fourth part over here is mutation cases. Always CSIR focus the mutation cases for this unit. So it is very important in case of C. elegans, in Drosophila, as well as frog and tetrapod limb development. Also, it is important to do a graph-based study because sometimes in C. urchin, they have asked like, what will happen if this binding receptor is uh, accumulated in the large quantity what will be the effect of the of this binding receptor on its ligand so like this you have to pursue your uh, graph based study and also signaling cascade you have to study in the form of uh, graph like what is wnt signaling and hedgehog so i hope it is clear to you all so let's proceed further with point number eight so point number eight over here is use of flashcards and sticky notes so what what is the meaning of using this flashcard so it is a way to divide the complicated ideas into smaller and simpler questions so what is the benefit of using this flashcard it will help you to revise the concept in a short duration of time also it will help you to memorize all of the relevant topics as quickly as possible and if you're making your own mnemonics it will make this flashcard more practical so the point number nine over here is solve question banks and analyze your preparation. So now once you are done with all your study and you are done with the revision, so it's a time to implement what you have learned before. So for this, you can practice previous year questions as well as CSI and Net Life Sciences mock papers. So while you are practicing this, you should always keep one thing in your mind. You should always spend for part B not more than two minutes for every question. And for part C, you cannot spend three to four minutes per question. So if you are doing this way and if you are practicing PYQs in this manner, it will always help you to accelerate problem solving skills, time management, spe speed and always will give you precision on a subject or on a topic. So also it will help you to determine the patterns of question that are asked and also what is the difficulty levels of a question in an exam. So it will also help you to determine your positive and weak point. So if you are weak in some part, so if you are scoring very less, should you should always go back again, study, practice and recall. Study, practice and recall. So you should always follow your SPR strategy and proceed with your work. Now, what is the last and the most important point over here? The last point over here is frequent revision. Revise, revise, revise. So you can recall and revise at least two hours daily. It provides a good hold of the concept. So you just need to ensure to stick to the schedule or you can plan it either a weekly or uh, daily basis. So it's up to you. If you want to plan your revision either daily, you can do it on a daily routine or if you want to plan it weekly, so you can do that too. So bef uh, before concluding today's topic, I just wanted to give you a final note for all my students. So I know cracking national level exam is not an easy job, but if you have three Ds, that is dedication, determination, and devotion, achieving any task becomes very easy. So just work hard, stick to your goal, you will definitely make it. So I just wanted to uh, conclude my topic by saying one motivational quote for you all guys. So anyone can put you on the right path but they can't make you walk it. You have to make the first step and decide if you are on the road to failure or success. 
So thank you everyone guys for watching this session. If you like this session, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Also share to your friends and colleague whosoever is in dilemma how to execute the study plan for unit five so that they can also get a doorway to their success. Also, if you want to practice mock test paper, there is a free link in the description box. You can access that too. You can download mock test paper. You can analyze your preparation and score yourself. So thank you everyone again for watching this session. Meet you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.